Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here. It's November 21st, and uh, I did not post a video yesterday, but in fact, I was in here working in my shop, just getting ready to continue with the big old radio, do some more alignment stuff when I couldn't get any sound out of it. And after a few minutes, I discovered it was really this guy here. My venerable Heathkit amplifier, which has been with me since 1976, maybe, 77. And I've used this for so many projects, but it's a dead puppy now. Unfortunately, I spent my time yesterday trying to get this guy to uh, work. And I got so many conflicting results from what I was doing with it, I couldn't in the end decide what the heck is wrong with it. So it could be everything from a little blown transistor to who knows what. So anyway, that's out of the picture now. Today I'm going to carry on, but in order to get audio out of this radio and safely into my ears or your ears, my, my, my only alternative here, I have no other spare independent amplifier, uh, I'm going to feed the signal coming out of this radio right into my audio recording equipment. Um, I'll have to wear headphones to hear it. It's going to present a number of, of sort of uh, video production challenges here for me, but I'll have to wear these to hear it. And there's going to be all kinds of level challenges, so this is going to be just going to be a little rough. But first, does it even work? Can I even do it? I spent the rest of my day yesterday looking for an audio uh, transformer. I I I want to. I don't want to. I want to maintain isolation between this project and my audio system. I, I just I can't bear to connect the ground from the chassis to my audio system here and carry on. I just I just think I've just got too much saying. Don't do that. Don't do that. So to provide isolation, I have found this transformer, which is not at all appropriate. It's not, let's put it this way, it's not intended for this kind of use, audio use. This is a power transformer. It's supposed to put 120 on one side and you get uh, 28 out of the other here. So what I've done is I've put the low impedance side towards my amplifier. This is, this is a cable just going, I'll show you where it's going here. It's going over here to a little mixer which is kind of like a sub-mixer mixing one channel on my main audio board here. And this is the channel. And I shouldn't have that up. Have you been hearing a hum all this time? No, you haven't been hearing a hum. Now this is coming from here. Okay, so the idea here is uh, to connect what I was picking off the audio up here, connect it to this transformer. Now the thing is the impedance, there's, there's no impedance matching happening here, that's for sure. So I would really like to be hooking this up to something of high impedance, like it was. But I'm going to have to just settle for whatever, whatever, the, whatever this is. And we'll see what happens. Hey, why don't I test this first? Yeah, that's a good idea. So I've already tested it quickly, so I, I know it's going to work to some degree. Let's see what it really does here on the uh, video. So I have a sweep generator operating back here. And the output from it is here. Okay, the output is nothing. I'm going to hook it up here. The volume is up on this. So I should be able to hear something. Turn the level up on this now. We'll see what we hear. Oh, I have another I have another volume control turn up. This is too high now. Let's put this like that. Too many volume controls. There we are. Okay, and I'll, I'll make it go in the middle here, in case you're listening in stereo. So you get this, that, and the volume control on the radio. <laughs> so many volume controls here, so I'm warning you. I'm warning you that today may, you, you, you may not want to wear headphones while you watch this video. <laughs> okay. So we want to connect up in here. So I'm going to do this. 
And I think I was mumbling about it being low impedance. I really want a high impedance there. It could be this radio can't drive this arrangement. We will see. I'm hopeful. Okay, so I think I'm going to just leave it like this. Now we're going to start the radio up. Of course, we can't hear it at all until. Okay, uh, oh, batteries on. We look okay otherwise. Make sure this is on a band that makes some noise. So I'm going to turn this to the uh, broadcast band. There we are. Okay, tube should be warmed up. So I am going to connect this right from the start. So uh, so if there's any signal there we will hear it. So, up with the volumes here. Okay, I'm wearing headphones. Don't, don't be wearing headphones. This is shorted here. It's no good. Okay, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this thing here. Volume down to start. Up a little bit. We have for an antenna, we have nothing. We have nothing for an antenna. Let's stick something on it here. And just to give it something. Telescope lead hanging there for no good reason now. Right on the B plus. Okay, watching the current. It's behaving like it always does. We should be hearing something. Five milliamps of B plus current. Uh, all volumes up. Full. Okay, we got something. So the, 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 the tonal quality is way off, but we got something here. Okay, you know what? That's a good start. So the the loss of bass is almost certainly due to the transformer I'm using. Do we really need, do we, do we need better quality sound to do this? That's a really good question. So I'm going to be feeding in signals that are going to produce a thousand hertz. If it's, if, if, if the audio level is manipulated outside of the receiver, I don't think it would matter actually, because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm listening to what I can listen to and then I'm peaking it when I'm doing the alignment. So if what I'm listening to is is low, the peaking it will still bring it up. I don't I don't think it's a, I don't think that's a problem. I think this will work. I think this will work. Ooh, lots of weird sounds. See if we can pick anything up there.
so what if I get rid of this capacitor here and just feed it straight into here? It's just an audio signal. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Let's try that. Okay, volume down. Let me get rid of this capacitor here. Volume down on our sound system. What do we get now? A lot more volume. I think that that shows that the uh, the problem here is this this transformer is uh, uh, affecting the sound terribly. But I think we can still continue. I think I'm good enough to go go ahead. At least I'm still in the process of. Uh, doing preliminary alignments and stuff like that, so if there's a little bit of a problem with this, it's really not going to affect what I'm up to. And what am I up to? The last thing we were doing was pondering, oh, I remember now, why did the local oscillator not oscillate on the higher bands? And the answer might be, I wrote a few answers here, low B plus. Okay, so I've been running this radio with, you know, barely enough B plus to make it operate maybe barely is the right word and I have to raise the B plus higher get it more in the normal range of a couple hundred volts instead of a hundred volts and maybe at that point the oscillator will begin oscillating so I think the best way to figure this out is to use the SDR put the sniffer coil somewhere near here tune to one of these two bands, the two top bands the lower of the two top bands Look at the SDR where the local oscillator should be and then raise the B plus and see if it shows up. It's like raise the Titanic. And we'll see what comes out. That's 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 my big breakthrough. Got that one while I was uh, laying in bed trying to fall asleep the other night. Rolling over in my head all these different things that are going on with this radio. And it suddenly dawned on me that the B plus may be the cause of the, the whole thing. I don't think so, frankly. I think I've been seeing this well. I'll take that back. I was going to say, I think I've been seeing this problem all along. Well, it's been low B plus all along. Okay, so we want to go on, uh, we want to, I got to get a few things set up here. Let me just do that. Uh, sometimes I impress myself with how, how dumb I can be. So I just spent five minutes trying to figure out why this radio is not making much sound. It's, it, what you're hearing is what it's making. Nothing, really. A little bit of a hiss, maybe. And, uh, Oh, that's right, I just moved it to a band that's silent. Duh. That's why it's not making any sound. So, uh, we're all ready now to ramp up the B plus and see if the radio comes to life. And we're gonna watch the SDR here while I do it. Okay, now the SDR is tuned um, the radio first. The radio, just double checking, everything is tuned to 11800. So it's tuned about, about uh, somewhere around here. That means a local oscillator is uh, 460 higher or, or lower than that. 460 puts it about, about here or just about here. So, so anywhere, let me just move this over a bit. Somewhere on the screen we expect something to pop up. And we would hear something in the, uh, in the audio too. Okay, there, uh, here we go. So you just have to trust, I'll, I'll call out the... Uh, I'll call it the elevation here as we land. So we're at uh, about 150 volts. Probably, probably we're around 120. In fact, the meter's quite a ways out here. Here we go, going up. So the the, the current draw is is shot way up here. It's way up, 100 milliamps. I'm at the red line. 200 volts. I don't see anything happening. Anything happening? No. I'm going to just dump it right to zero. Nothing changed whatsoever. Well, now i got to ask myself, was that, was that enough? Well, well, was that enough? 200. I think that's got to be enough. Um, let's verify that this is actually working. I'm going to switch to a band that I know operates. Oh, volume down before we... Uh, I think I had 
have the volume down. Doesn't matter, does it? Because we're looking for the local oscillator. Okay, volume, 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 volume down now. Okay, I think we're on an operating band now. Volume up. I don't hear anything. Okay, well now let's get back to the camera here. You're looking at a, an interesting screen. Um, what all has gone wrong here? I think I should hear this now. Oh, because I slammed the B plus to zero. Let's put it back up to my usual spot here. Okay, so this is the usual spot. We aren't hearing a thing. This is really, really... Okay, so uh, what happened there was uh, my ears got blown right off. Um, yeah, <laughs> my ears got blown right off, that's for sure. So I've, I've edited that piece out, hopefully. I edited that piece out, or I, I, I dropped the volume way down so it doesn't blow your ears off. But So what was it? It was a wire here. A wire. Sounds like it's working. Let's use the SDR and, and just look at the local oscillator here. So you see some things moving around there, but uh, the band, yeah, this is so confusing. So the band we're on right now, and I'm going to have to verify this. Just hang on a sec. Okay, so this, this is, uh, I shouldn't have to look, but I'm looking. I'm looking anyway, 19. 25, 31, we're in the 31 meter band, 31 meter band is, and I'm looking, I don't trust myself, 9 megahertz, now for some reason we're seeing a, a, a signal up, up here, let's ignore that, we'll go down to 9, oops, 9 megahertz here, now we should see a local oscillator, we are tuned to about 9 point, well, rough, well, let's think of 9.6, add 460, 10, 1060, so at 1060, there it is right there, there's the local oscillator. Um, pretty sure I don't have the antenna switched on into my shop this morning. Um, so let's let's do this. I'm gonna stop for a sec. Get my antenna working. We're gonna see what we can listen to in this, this radio. Okay, hey, picking up one short wave station there. <laughs> the sound is terrible, but that's got to be because of how I'm doing the audio here today. So, I think we're in business. Um, I think what I need to do now is I, I need this meter to respond to the signal level coming. Hmm, should I get which side of the transformer should I hook that guy up on? So, uh, yeah, it's a good question. It's an interesting question. Let's just get the lead here. Um, can I continue to use it where it is? Well, I think I can. I don't think there's any problem with where it is. Let's make sure of that. Now I'm going to be I'm going to be volumed crazy in here because there's so many volume controls to, to operate. And. Uh, you know what else? We, we need an oscillator signal to really test this out properly. 
didn't think of that. Okay, so the oscillator output is here. I'm going to swap the antenna out. I have three antennas in my backyard. Uh, just kind of slapped up antennas. They're not works of art, that's for sure. And uh, I had a big limb come down off a tree and take two of them down. Uh, hey, I got them both back up again, sort of. I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> I just sort of slung them up over limbs and trees and stuff like that. But I got, I got three antennas in the air again. Because it's winter. Once the snow falls, I'm not going out there to do anything. So, lucky break here. Okay, so we have a signal ready to go in. We have the radio tuned to, uh, didn't I say, nine... Uh, what did I say? We are tuned to 9.6. Okay, so we're going to verify that. It's a very slow start here, but sometimes that's how it goes. So we want to be able to hear this. We should be able to hear this. At uh, 9.6. Fantastic. Something's actually working as I expect. So, uh, I guess what that means is I'm ready to continue with the alignment. So now I've got to. Okay, let's let's uh, let's check all that out here. Oh. Okay, I'm going around in circles here a little bit already. Um, so well, the two top bands don't have a local oscillator, and my objective was to experiment with a higher B plus. So I've done the experiment, didn't make any difference. Experiment is still has a question mark after it. What was it? Was that enough? Did I, did I really get it? Could, could still be B plus is the cause of the lack of oscillation, but the fact that they don't work, the two top bands, means I can't proceed with the alignment since the first band, the uh, 11 megacycle band, needs to be done in order to do the detector and the uh, antenna adjustments. And, and I no, no oscillator to work with. So I'm really just basically where I was. I am where I was. My great idea I wrote down here just went down the drain. So I don't have another idea right now. <laughs> so I have to stop and get some hypothesis here of what could be wrong with the radio. Why no local oscillator on the two higher pans? Well, it's the next morning, so maybe I should say good morning again. And uh, so, yes, I still have no real idea why this oscillator won't work. So I reread the, uh, I read everything I'd get my hands on about this radio. And that amounts to the manual. In the manual, there is a warning for those technicians who would use a device called a uh, set analyzer. A set analyzer is a pretty cool all-in-one testing device for repairing radios like this that uh, technicians or repair guys could have bought back in the 40s or 50s. Um, they often have a lot of magic eyes in them as uh, in maybe a meter or two and they supply uh, everything, they monitor everything that you need is kind of in this box. So you can imagine a big cable comes out of this box with lots of leads on the end of it for making connections into the radio you're working on. The warning in the manual for this radio is if you use one of those, there's a chance the oscillator won't oscillate. And why is that? Well, because you've hooked up extraneous cables, uh, you've changed the impedance of circuits and stuff like that. What that says to me is the oscillator is very sensitive in this radio, and if things just aren't quite right, if they're a little bit out of sorts, it might be enough to stop it from oscillating. And I would think, I, I would just think, it's the higher frequencies which would be more precarious. And sure enough, this radio won't oscillate. The oscillator won't oscillate on the two highest bands. So, you know, that implicates things like uh, component position and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. There's also a warning that in these radios, if the uh, grid lead, grid, not, not if, it may be the case that the uh, 
that we hooked on here. This, uh, this is the oscillator tube that the grid lead here may shift during transportation of the radio. Now what you're talking about is this, this wire here shifting. Um, in this radio there's, there's a grommet fixing it in place relative like, to the chassis. Like it's going through a hole. The other, the other leads like this one are just in an empty hole so 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 they can move around in there and I suspect this lead if it moved even the slightest in here would throw the oscillator off that again indicates the precariousness of this oscillator circuit and lastly you know this is a late 1930s radio the tubes are three letter designation tubes that that indicates that this is a vintage um, my guitar pick get in here that indicates it's a vintage where, again, the radio is a little more precarious. Um, as, as you could imagine, as time went by, and this would be true of virtually everything, the original designs were a little bit on a knife edge to get them to operate. But then, as time went by, they learned new circuits, newer tubes, and all this kind of stuff. And that knife edge gets wider and wider at the top. So the radios become generally more tolerant as you go along. So I believe. Anyway, so this would be this is an intolerant radio, <laughs> and it's uh, yeah, it's worse than that. It's an itinerant radio. Well, I think the next step for me is just to go ahead and replace all these uh, wires that are going to the grid caps. The, the reason is they're made with this green uh, green colored insulation that uh, I have found almost always. Uh, fails in radios of this age and the insulation just cracks like this so no real problem with this one because it's going through a grommeted hole but the rest of these they're just going through a hole cut in the metal chassis and they can cause a short here pretty easily none of them are shorted though where you, you say oh that's the problem no not the problem the last thing is changing these is actually not as simple as you might imagine because the top part of the cap is steel. Uh, steel so it has some springiness so it can grab the top of the tube. So I have to use steel here. Uh, you can't solder to steel. So these are almost always compression connectors. Uh, and that's all they are, just compression. It's just been squeezed down on the wire here. So what I will do is I will, will not cut this right off at the connector. I will cut the wire back a bit and then I will solder to the wire that's already here in this connector. Underneath the deal is just like any other wire. You just find the terminal and solder it in. So I'm going to do those. Is that going to help? <laughs> Fat chance, but you never know. You never know. I never know, anyway. Okay, there's the critters right there. Now I've cut them all off and left a little tail of wire back in the radio, so chances of me getting confused putting this back together is reduced. <laughs> That's all I'll say. So I'm going to leave this tail here on each one of these. Hmm. What was somebody trying to do here? No, no advantage to doing this. What would prompt someone to do this? It's possible this connection is poor. This is not the one from the local oscillator, though. Because um, it's just a compression in here. And, you know, it could get loose, and maybe somebody discovered wiggling this does something. Feels great to me. Feels perfectly fine to me, but. Or they just didn't like the look of the bare wire, which is probably really the, the problem. Goodbye, green wire. Green wire everywhere. Now I've got a I've got a yellow wire and a green wire here. Was I triggering bad focus on my camera during that? I can go with the yellow or the green. Why don't we go with the green? It's a little stiffer, but uh, it would uh, look like the original. Pretty good length, so this is a longer than necessary. I can cut it back in the radio when the time comes. 
make four of these. Oh, it's not terrible. Oh, you know what? I got this black pad here. It's caused my camera to uh, adjust for mostly black. And, you know, the average light color here is... And that's why my hands have turned into, uh, like, the sun is shining on them. Unless I cover them black. Oh, the issues. The issues. is going to be my tool silencer <laughs> where I'm going to be placing my tools so they don't clunk on my bench which I know is hard to hear it's hard for me to hear it in here even um, but right now I'm using it as a wood pad yeah I know when I really get going in here I start throwing the tools on the bench there we are, four pieces. In each case, we simply do this. All we gotta do. Waiting for snow today. From a Colorado Low, which is a weather maker in Ontario. these guys up and uh, stick them in the radio and then attach the other end we're done and uh, I don't imagine these were having any real effect on the uh, radio uh, negative effect on it but uh, but they really do, do need to be changed somebody down the road is going to change one of the tubes in here or something they're gonna they're gonna move this wire and the sh you know, the ruined insulation here is going to come into contact with the chassis. Not after this is done. Okay, I'm going to carry on.
four new guys fit in here now. One of these is a real difficult one, I'll show you. So most of these you can get at the hole, you can see the hole, you can see the wire, the whole shot, the easy connection. Not this one right here. Oops, this one right here. It's underneath all these parts. It barely comes through the chassis and immediately connects to the uh, terminal. So that's a toughie. Otherwise, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, so, uh, whoops. The, uh, the wire that was going through the hole is this stranded stuff here, which I managed to hook with a hooking tool here. I'll just, just hook it and pull it back. The green insulation just completely disappeared. That's great. Now I'm going to fit this. This one, I want it to be, you know, roughly the right length. It can't be, can't be too sloppy here. So we'll go down through the hole and try to make it come out the other side. There it is. And then it's it's connecting right here. So we need to make this look nice up here. that stick it right on just like that so now we get an idea of what the length should be not much should cut it well, I'm gonna mark it I'm gonna mark it with a pen I certainly don't want the insulation I guess the basic idea too is the shorter the wire the better. So I'm going to cut the wire. I'm cutting the wire. This is not the insulation. This is cut the wire here and the insulation no further back than there. I get two spots. Of course, I can always be generous. Looks like I'm working in the sunshine. There's the two spots. Okay, I'm gonna cut it. Just cut it a wee bit longer than what I showed there. Pull off the insulation. Leave just a little more than what I originally showed. There we go. Okay, I feed this guy back down through the hole. These are stranded wires and for, you know there could be strands going everywhere here. Just made a mess of it. A little trouble with my fingers getting in there. Bottom. So 
it's a little long. It's a little long like that. Should we leave it? How can that be a problem? There's an awful lot of wire here. What's an extra millimeter down under? This is the, uh, so this, which one is this? This is the, I don't know which tube this is. Somewhere down the line. It's not the first tube. I think we're okay. wandering around in there but uh, but that's gonna work it's gonna work good now if somebody yanks up on this wire well shame on them <laughs> don't yank on those wires okay so I got three more to do just like that and then we're back to trying the radio Make sure it's still working as well as it was. And then back to what about the oscillator that won't oscillate? Okay, I got all the grid wires done, so now it's time to test the radio. I'd be so surprised if it didn't work. Work the same as it was not working before. Let's put it that way. Okay. First, let's just check the audio before I turn any power on here. Up, up. Yeah. You can hear a little click. There we go. Okay, just verifying things are working. Volume back down. So again, I'm pumping the volume straight out of here, straight into my audio recording system. There's no speaker involved. Consequently, I'm wearing headphones so I can hear what's going to happen. Let's turn the volumes down. Here. Just double check the B plus connections. And this is a meter connection we're not too interested in, really. Okay, I think we're ready. So first the heater is on. Okay, power supply warming up. And in the meantime, I'm going to start up my SDR over here. Because uh, assuming the radio works fine, I'm going to test it on the uh, broadcast band. Let's go there first. Broadcast band. Okay. Uh, uh, I didn't notice any lights here. 116, I think we're good to go. Everything's ready. Definitely. B plus, and we should start hearing things. Let me turn the volume up here so we don't miss something. I hmm. thought that made a scratchy sound before. Volume's down. Okay, B plus. B plus going up. Uh, the usual 25 milliamps. Let me just, yep, yeah, definitely tubes, definitely warmed up in there. I can see it in the in the eye tube. I scared the living daylights <laughs> out of me. That's interesting. Is this this is hooked up to. 
I don't know if that's just an in, in induction there or if there's actually a wire connection. Hey, look at this. We're missing half the sound here. Okay, volume's down. Volume's down. And we want to go on the uh, outside. Don't we? Volume's up. B, B plus is up. Ooh, we're not hearing anything here. Well, isn't this, a, isn't this a bad sign? Okay, so the current, the B plus current's flowing. Something's going on in this radio. Uh, volume. You can hear some, something there. Oh my gosh, what, what have I done now? Uh, we're operating without an antenna. What are we going to hear without an antenna? A whole lot of nothing. Let me get my antenna on there. I have the feeling the switch is thrown the wrong way. Volume's down. There we go. Now I barely got it turned up. Oh yeah. And it's just ignoring the. Uh, and I can fix. Oops. I can fix the tone here a little bit. Let's see what I can do. Take some of the sharpness out of it anyway. Okay, my little radio. I tune something in just to make me feel good. Should get something right down in here. I thought I heard the voice. A stronger signal down here. Okay, I'm going to put the uh, ground on for the antenna. Crank up the volume. Not much different. Point of that exercise is to make sure the local oscillator is working and the radio is generally working. Yes. Now. What are the chances there's a local oscillator operating way up there? We're going to go to the top band. Come down one. This is the lowest non-working band. And we need our sniffer coil here. We're sniffing away. You don't hear anything, that's for sure. This is going to go here. Flip to the uh, SDR screen and see what we can find here. Okay, let's get it going. So we're on the uh, 11 megahertz band, 11 megahertz. So let's go up there. And there's nothing visible at all. So for sure the local oscillator would be visible in here. I'm going to go down one band, make sure I haven't made things worse. Down one band. Okay, so now we're on the 9 megahertz band. Should find, look, at, look at this thing. It's really unnerving, you know. But I think we're going to find something down here, too. There we are. So this has got to be the local oscillator. It looks like it's in the right spot. I'm going to tune the radio a wee bit. Down, down, down. Up, up, up. Yeah, that's definitely a local oscillator. So loud and clear, easily picked up by my SDR. And then if we go up and look at this weird thing here. And, uh, hey, where, where, where? It's odd. So 
why would moving my screen around make this bigger and smaller? So. That's a little mysterious. All I'm doing is adjusting the SDR screen here, and uh, am, I, am I seeing this wrong? Well, there certainly is some strong evidence now of how poor this radio is, the SDR radio, uh, because the only thing that's changing here is just the screen setting and just moving it around, and these signals are coming and going. Hmm. Yeah, lots of problems with using the SDR this kind of stuff. Look at that, eh? So, um, I'm going to tune the radio a touch. You see that jump around? The bigger the bigger one with the red trace. Tune down, it goes down also. You know what that means? That means, you know, that, that's a significant signal there. Um, if you could get a significant signal in from the antenna at around this frequency, you know, 460 away, it's going to come out of the speaker regardless of the fact that you're on the 9 megahertz band. That would be a little confusing. Is there any more of these out here? Is it real? I don't know if it's even real. Because, um, I don't see anything else. Because it moves funny when I move the SDR. This one too. So this is a very large, now this is the real local oscillator coming out of the radio right now. Very strong signal much weaker now. Well, I don't understand what's going on. It seems like an SDR uh, effect here I've never noticed before. here. Yeah, I think these are all SDR created signals. I think if we tried to pick these up with a radio or something, we, we wouldn't pick these up on the radio. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Something here. See, I, I just don't know what to make of this kind of stuff. If these are real signals coming in the radio, they could become you know, they, they could mix with incoming signals and all kinds of stuff come out of the speaker. You'd be picking up shortwave everywhere. And everything everywhere. So, is there any of these uh, fake guys? So, so let, let me go up a band again where there's no local oscillator. Yeah, I believe quite firmly. And I'm just doing a little bit of reading about this. Uh, I've realized, I'm thinking about it, that Back in the day, like the problem I'm having right now, determining if the local oscillator is working in that, and I'm using the SDR you're looking at to do it, uh, boy, that's easy. Back in the day, it's tricky to find out if the local oscillator is working. Uh, one of the ideas is uh, to measure the uh, grid voltage. There we are again. Over here, I see a signal at 12. But if I just slide this over here, there's no signal. Oh my gosh, it's just another factor here. Now let me just tune the radio a touch. So that signal's not moving at all when I tune. So that's either a real thing or an artifact of the SDR, or who, who knows, nothing to do with the radio though. Not gonna find anything more up here, I don't think. Look at, look at these guys. Now this is a, a pattern here. See, like uh, this matches this. You know, it's a mirror uh, 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 on this line right, right about here. I bet you they all they all move together. Let's move. I'm gonna tune the radio, and I'm full of crap. Nothing's happening at all. Full of crap. So I'm a human being, and I can't stand seeing patterns without thinking it means something. Like like this this pattern right through here. I wonder what that is. Let's just listen to it. Curious. Look at 
be down you can see it down there whoops down here okay uh, it's not helping the radio in at all No local oscillator still. No difference in the radio's operation after my little bit of work there. Uh, so we're still stuck with the no oscillations on the higher frequencies. Now I think I'm going to end my video here. It's a two day video. I'm not even sure what's going to be in it anymore, but at least I got something done on this radio. Uh, and uh, I got another day to think some more about it. Thanks so much for watching.